Ruby Colorspot 700E80. That's some actual good gear uh, from a very known uh, company, Roby. I got to use them twice in my life and it was absolutely awesome. Uh, they have lots of effect built in and they are very good color, uh, very good lamp. Just uh, lack a little bit of output considering uh, the size and the consumption, but it's still pretty uh, impressive. This is uh, not very new, it's quite old actually, but uh, yeah, they are still uh, in use <laughs> because they are just super reliable. Just to wonder, I have a little problem, uh, the power supply is uh, failing and it's quite an interesting construction because there are not only one power supply. There is actually uh, four power supply stacked together and for each one, each one of them, or for a different section of the unit, so one for uh, probably just the motherboard, one is for the motor, one is for the tilt, one is for the accessory. I'm not very sure, but yeah, for power supply. <laughs> That's very nice. They are equipped with a full-on CMI module here with a CTO filter. Then you have an actual real color wheel here if you want some custom color or if you want to have some red because the CMY red is not the best red you can have then you got your standard uh, fixed gobo and rotating gobos here and one thing that I love about those feature is the animation wheel it gives a very cool effect and it was probably one of the first projector to have such an animation wheel despite uh, the very old and early model like Telescan Mark uh, 5 if I remember right, 4 or 5. The mechanism is pretty interesting because you have one motor just for the rotation of the wheel and then you have another motor so you can put it in front of uh, the beam here or remove it. So then we have a three phase prism, very nice, uh, frost here and then if I uh, can uh, access it, there is a zoom and a focus. And also a little iris just in here with the gear. On both of them, power supply need to be replaced and a little cleanup of the optics. Thankfully, uh, the power supply is very easy to access. Just remove the cover and you can uh, directly change them on the go here too. Unfortunately, the customer got me replacement part. So these are the power supply here, switching mode power supply, half bridge, smoothing, switching, transformer, smoothing on the output and then out, very simple design. But now I need to get those on the bench. They are super heavy. Let's go! If I power it up, this is what happened. We got one, two, three power supply working, and the last one is off. And so, motor are not locked. So, this power supply needs to be replaced here. And then <laughs> what is this weird construction? Where is the plug? Why it is soldered directly on the board? And it's the same for every one of them. That doesn't look to be OEM, but let's check on the other one. Now there is an actual plug here. have this kind of connector here but I don't think they go or maybe I need to find a 5 pin one this is a bit too large
Yeah, I only have three pin or six pin, but not five. Uh, anyway, that's going to be a solder job for this one. That's uh, way too small. Going to change this one, which is more for SMD, with this one. Yeah, much better. The solder was quite hard to melt, so I used some flux to help me unsolder the pin and I used my solder pump to suck the solder. Oh my god, I feel so stupid. Oh shit. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Instead of putting my soldering iron here, I put it in the pen holder. Oh crap, that smells super bad. Oh my god. Whoops. <laughs> After this little issue, I managed to uh, remove the wire here. And well, since I don't have any replacement plug, I'm probably just going to solder them in place like uh, they uh, did it. I really don't get why you would they remove all the plastic parts. That's very weird. I'm going to use this kind of thermal heat shrink. Cut in half. Yep. 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 So I know you can use the soldering iron to heat up the heat shrink, but mm, it tends to uh, put some residue onto your soldering iron. Well, now mine is kind of full of plastic, but uh, yeah, the lighter is a bit better. And here I've got a very tiny access, and with my soldering I'm going to burn this capacitor. That's not very good. Whereas this is pretty safe. And it's easy to do and very fast. And here we go. Yes. Nice. And just to notice, there is a two motor for the pan. Look, one here, the sensor. Here's the sensor wheel, and one here, on the other side. Wow, amazing! So they will have a lot of torque. Yes, very nice. I can remount uh, the front here with the screen and by the way it's super nice they use a stepper motor as an encoder for the wheel here because uh, every motor can be also a generator if you turn it and it's uh, generating some, uh, some current and since it's a stepper uh, each little step make a, an electrical pulse that is getting triggered uh, probably on a little circuit board. And by the way, this stepper motor is uh, the same as the one on the inside. I'm pretty sure they have done that so that uh, you can very easily replace every part because most of the parts are ex uh, the same and very standard. And also an optical encoder can get uh, beat up by dust. Those don't. They last forever. Yeah, very neat little uh, Little construction, little machine. <laughs> yeah, let's put that back. Before closing it up, let's contemplate a bit how this thing is put together nicely. So the main comes in here 
Um, it's on a wire, I would have preferred to have a connector, but um, that's meant for a fixed events, so yeah, not a big deal. So the switch with a nicely wired uh, fuse and ballast, which is this uh, thing here, this huge heat sink. This is an electronic ballast with here the filter for the main because um, switching power supply such as ballast and uh, power supply here can produce a lot of interference on over the wire so um, this filter with inductor it's for uh, eliminate as much as, uh, as possible of the interference so that's very neat then power goes to each power supply in here with uh, each one of them having a separate wire for each board in here each fan has its own filter and there is a sensor here so that it can sense the temperature and can detect if you need to replace or clean the filter which is super wholesome because a lot of users forget uh, to clean the device and because of uh, this lack of maintenance all of this unit gets uh, warm and it can degrade the power supply, it can degrade the components and then you end up with uh, even more uh, repair to do. So yeah, that's a very cool uh, primitive uh, maintenance built in into it. Very nice. My camera stopped working. <laughs> Alright, this is the inside. Wow, beefy motor, huge amount of capacitor. Take note, Chinese put capacitor, a lot of them. <laughs> Yeah, very nice. And the other side also have his little board with again a lot of capacitor and this is the fourth wire. So yeah, one, two, three, and then the fourth one is this main board here. Nice. And as you can see, I've got a clean air filter error code. I'm just looking at the filter, yeah, no wonder. It's very easy to replace, just a quarter turn screws. Well, this one is already off. And uh, here it is, quite dusty indeed. So let's clean up that. This is a speaker form. I think it's going to be uh, just enough. Time for the cleanup. It's very disgusting. I'm going to use my cleaner, it's just an APC cleaner. All purpose cleaner. <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> so I've got 30 minutes to make a cleanup on both of the units. And hopefully I will uh, manage to do that. Yes, yeah, so I will have to uh, fracture more from, uh, to my costume, which is not something I want to do. So it's a bit of a speed run. paint on the front lens. Wow, it's kind of hard to remove. Alright, the exterior is done. Now I need to clean the module because there is a layer of dust on each lens. It's not very ideal. To remove the module, uh, I saw there is some screw here to remove all of this part here. But for now I want to concentrate on the CMI and color uh, wheel here. And there is some screw here that you just untighten and you remove the harness. You pinch those two aluminium pieces here and then you slide the module.
Wow. Awesome. They are magnetized. Yes. So they are held up by magnets. Super cool. Something's wrong here. So this wheel can move freely here. And then this wheel just under, they can run freely here. But then the one on the right here, I can't get the top one and the bottom one to move independently. Or very super hard, like I need to go with my finger. And it's not very normal. It shouldn't be as hard, like I really have to push quite a lot. Mm, and I tried on the other fixture and this is uh, very smooth on the other one. So I think, see, every time I want to move something, both wheel are running at the same time, which is not good. The grease is completely dried. So I need to clean up this and I'm going to use acetone for that. And then to lubricate the bearing, I'm going to put some of the thinnest oil I can find. Definitely not the WD-40. Oh sh**! Yeah, now it's complete. And I can move independently. Much easier. Very nice. Super cool. So now let's actually clean up the lens. With the big blue, of course. Now on the second one, and by the way I really advise you to put a cloth or something under so that you don't break the glass in the, in the side. Let's see, it's very greasy, I don't know what's going on but... Wow, that's a disaster. Hmm, nice caramel. Hmm. Alright, that's better. Okay, folks, don't put too much grease on your bearing or moving parts because there are fans nearby, and by the time air blowing through uh, the unit, the grease will gather a lot of dust and it will end up in just a total mess. At the right amount, just enough. Yeah, I'm very happy about uh, how it came up. It's not very easy, almost too easy, and as you can see, there is still a little bit of time left on the video. Uh, so yeah, now I'm going to try to repair those if I uh, manage to understand what's going on. Into um, it's not very necessary, but the last, the next time I'm going to have to deal with one of those. I'll be super happy to have a working uh, 
one of them or two one of them that would be super awesome so let's dive into that but first it's workout moment Easy. Alright, so my goal is going to be uh, trying to repair those. So let's start with the most obvious thing, of course, the fuse. Because there is an actual fuse in, in it. And it's this little box here. It's a 2 amp fuse. T stands for electronics, that means that it's very fast to react. So let's check it. Good. Oh, here we have our first issue. The fuse is blown. The NTC thermistor is okay. It's not the same uh, color. Hmm, by the way, it's not exactly the same circuitry. Well, if I look closely. Yeah, they are far from the same. Maybe a generation in between. I have to take that in account. And the same. Well, that's not a big deal. So let's check the NTC, let's check the bridge rectifier. No shorts, no shorts on the output. No shorts, no shorts on the output. Yep. And just in case that uh, this resistor is blown here, and this one they are measuring 0.3, yeah, basically open circuit. So resistor is gone, and the resistor is connected and serial with the switching transistor. I'm pretty sure the switching transistor is a short circuit. And yes, it is. Mm, there is a little diode I can see just in here. And it's short circuit too. And this one transistor is alright. Diode is alright. Open circuit on one side and with a high value resistance on the other, so that's nice. Let's power it up, I will probe on the switch in uh, transistor if I get some signal. Alright, so let's go. What? <laughs> yeah, I really don't get why this power supply come to life like that. I literally didn't change anything despite um, heating up the solder points. It was even giving the right voltage and everything, so yeah, quite weird. There is no AC voltage on the outside. Yeah. I think it's good. So let's try to load it with a dumb resistor here. Yeah, yeah, still working. With this resistor, it's a 10 ohm uh, resistor with a 12 volt, it's basically around 1 and something amp. Alright, this one is good. Now back to our blown uh, board here. So I will remove the transistor so that you can make some measurements. cooking the three leg at the time and now tapping technique here we go yes so shorted and now what about the diode still shorted so the diode is gone too nice. 
now? What about now? Nice! What is gone? Yeah, so it's a MOSFET and a pretty good MOSFET to be honest. It's rated for 800 volts with quite a lot of power delivery. Yeah, very nice. I don't think this is the cause of um, the issue I got on this board. I think it's a diode short itself. The transistor got um, well got shorted and it blew and then this this went short circuit and after it uh, went all you 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 see it's all kind of burns. <laughs> So I found this replacement uh, one here, it's uh, not exactly the same value, um, but at least exactly the same uh, maximum, <laughs> maximum current of 1 amp. This is also 1 amp, but this one is the 4007, which is uh, 1000 volt, and this one is only uh, 400 volt, which is enough. It's just rectified main, so it's going to be a 300 something volt. I think this one is going to be uh, good enough. But I didn't manage to find a MOSFET replacement in my uh, little stock here. <laughs> I will ask El Professor. Well, you have to look at the characteristics. ZFP. What is important to watch out about MOSFETs? First of all, to me, the pinout should match. Yes, the pinout. They need to correspond. Is that for sure? Then we should know if this internal diode is existing. Sure, but this diode, it's very common. Well, the first thing to look at is the RDS on value. On this one, it's 1.8 ohms, that's quite a low value. Then you look at the max current, so yours is a plastic package, right? Yes. Then it's 800 volts and 5.2 amps. Yes. You know that on transistors, here, there is a metal part, right? Mm -hmm. A metal center tap is better for cooling because the thermal performance are improved. Yes, of course. But then you're not isolated. And what about putting a plastic sheet in between? Indeed, you need to place an isolating kit with a plastic washer for the screws. Yep. Don't forget the washer. Yeah, I got plenty of them. 5.2 amps. Oh wow, the difference between plastic and metal package is night and day. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Well, first of all, something that I got completely wrong about the diode is that you need to be careful to take the actual value, so if I choose 1000 volts, it's not for nothing, of course. I thought that just 400 volts was enough because it's a main power supply, so I, would, I, I, I was like, yeah, it's rectified main, but no, it's uh, the placement of the diode means that it will receive a high peak value, so yeah, I need to take uh, an account of that. Fortunately, <laughs> I found one. It's at the moment I need to show you the characteristic. It's going to be boring. Yeah, so that's the original, right? 1000 volts here. And the one I found is this one, and we are 910 volts RMS and max at 1030. So, yeah, to me it's quite good. 1 amp and 1 amp for the original, that's alright. And even the speed, so this one is 500 nanos gun, and this one, the new one, and. Uh, It's not written, so it doesn't matter. I have no idea what I'm saying. But then, for uh, the MOSFET, I still uh, wasn't able to find one in my stock. So he was like, maybe I could uh, use, uh, I could try to find one inside a power supply. For example, a computer power supply. Unfortunately, I used to have a couple of them, but I recycled almost all of them and the only one I've got is complete and I want to utilize it for another project. 
I dig around my room I found some uh, power supply here that uh, I haven't uh, touched so, Yeah, this is a uh, plus and minus 15 and 5 volts of I, I checked the MOSFETs I checked it, right? I checked it that value are completely different <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure if I put this one inside this little power supply it's just going to explode <laughs> and then I come across this little thing this is a very weird power supply that produces very high voltage I have no idea where this thing was used even no idea what I'm going to use it for so I don't feel too bad to sacrifice uh, this thing and here I check the transistor here and the value fucking match They put some kind of a coating layer to protect from moisture, probably. <laughs> it made a fucking mess. Now the legs are just too short. Fuck. As you can see here, I need to extend the middle one a bit further. And I need some legs. Yeah, I was kind of screwed, but... My last resort was to cut some solid core wire and try my best to solder them and it was horrible. Tiny wire. They never solder good. Took me a lot of time. Electricity. Oh shit! Then before soldering, always put the screw back. It will help you align the solder. I lost the screw! I lost the screw, so... I use this little thing here. Here, this this thing, and it was just perfect. So yeah.
no big deal. After it was time to replace the diode, but my diode was... The leg was not long enough, so I couldn't fold it like it used to be. Because like the original was kind of like that, folded. But I couldn't do that, so that means that uh, the layout was too large, so I had to improvise a bit. But I rather don't show you that. There are some dark secrets that the repair community should keep. Also, I replaced the fuse, but I don't have a replacement fuse. Wish me luck. Just before testing I want to at least check if the output is not shorted. By the way, I should have uh, checked that uh, way earlier. Oh no. They are shorted too. <laughs> what a mess. And what? Let's remove the diode. For that, I need to remove the cooling plate. Oh no, the diode is shorted. Testing the caps. All right. All right. At least the caps are good. Mm. Maybe this one. It's not working. Zero. <sighs> this is much more complicated than I thought. What a waste of time that was. I tried my best to repair the thing. The best. But at the end it just won't leave. And the video is getting bloody long. And I need to hurry up because uh, it needs to get uploaded in like two hours. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't mean that I won't spend any more time on that. I'm, if I found the courage to continue this. So in any case, I hope you, you like this video. Um, since the content was a bit different this time, I tried a new technique. A bit inspired from uh, Farine Dublé, an automobile YouTuber, quite famous in France, that I absolutely uh, love. Yeah, train just some stuff, put in the comment if you like it or if you just absolutely hate it. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this one and i see you next week. Hopefully. <laughs>